Here I have a bed full of Argema mimosae pupae, also known as the African moon moth. Some of them are still in their cocoons, at least halfway. Opening cocoons is sometimes necessary to check on the condition of pupae, especially when you are no longer sure if they are viable. Moon moth pupae have interesting coloring on their heads and are not all completely one color like many other silk moth pupa. They are related to the comet moth, Argema mitrae, who you might have seen in my previous videos, although they come from completely different areas of Africa. Here you can see some Argema mitrae hanging, still awaiting emergence. And here is my very first female to emerge. She is completely perfect and quite a stunner. Let me see if I can get her a little closer for a better view if she is agreeable with being handled. Many silk moths are quiet during the day and easily handled as they are nocturnal. This one, however, is an exception and is a bit more challenging to keep her still for prime time. She clearly has her own ideas of making her way back into her enclosure. Once she settles down, we can get a better look at those incredible markings and defensive mimicry. Let's take a little macro view now of her currently quiet body. I am amazed at the green antenna. I have not seen this before on any other silk moth, although I am sure there must be others out there. The dark charcoal band lining her upper wings is shared with her cousin Argema mitrae as well. Their coloring and markings are nothing short of artwork if you have an appreciation for the amazing minute details on this insect. The detail and shading is very specific. Lines are drawn with such accuracy it seems an incredible feat of nature. The scalloped edges of her wings and the vertical pale yellow lines help break up her pattern against leaves and flowers, helping her to hide and blend in despite her overall bright coloration. Every marking has its purpose, every scale covering her body has a story to tell right down to the bottom of her long tails, which develop with twisted ends, meant to spin during flight and effectively confuse bats that are trying to track them down as a meal. The moth can lose these tails to a bat and they will simply break away, allowing the moth to escape and still fly just as well to live yet another day. When your lifespan is very short, a day can make all the difference between mating and success or failure to pass on its genes to the next generation. Here's a closer look at her face and now you can see her fuzzy burgundy legs and dark black eyes. And forgive me for the bit of shaking in this portion, I'm holding her in a somewhat awkward position at the moment. But I do like to always show off their faces a bit and again the green antenna in all their fine detail. So let's get her back on here, and I would just like to show you the full-on threat display this moth has. It is one of my favorites. When threatened, they will open their forewings slightly like this, showing off the hindwing eye spots. Now if you look closely at it, you can see how much it actually looks like a face, complete with a mouth of sorts, which can mimic an owl, a snake, or basically anything that discourages predators from seeing it as food. Altogether, camouflaging this beauty into something it is not and something wonderful to look at. And just so you get the full experience, here is what she looks like from underneath. A bit less brightly colored, a bit more like a yellowing leaf of fall. But that large abdomen is carrying up to about 200 eggs, and now she will wait in hopes for a male to find her. So I hope you enjoyed this unusual species as much as I have, and please consider subscribing as there will always be more to be discovered.